Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Let's read together. One to read. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. One more time. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Thank you, Jesus. You are as powerful as your ability to discern what God is doing per time and per season. God is an eternal God, is an eternal king. He does not dwell in time. He does not even dwell in eternity. But as far as his work with men is concerned, he's fragmented his dealings with men into times and seasons. Someone say times and seasons one more time say times and seasons that means god is not always doing the same thing are we together god has a program and that program is fragmented into times and seasons and one of the ways that you win with god is to sustain the intelligence and the faculty of discernment to know when seasons change and to know god's emphasis per season and per time the bible says and of the tribe of issachar men who had an understanding of the times that they knew what israel ought to do and the bible says as a result they became captain they were heads other people had to look on to them for direction hallelujah a believer must be one who sustains the ability to stand upon your watch to set yourself upon the tower and hear what god is saying else a season will come and pass and like jacob you will say the lord was in this place and i knew not it is amazing how prophetic seasons come and pass and many believers may not even be aware remember our scripture in acts chapter 19 it was a dispensation of the holy ghost already the holy ghost was already moving empowering people recruiting people and here were certain disciples who did not even know whether there be any Holy Ghost. So it is possible that a season can be upon believers, upon the body of Christ. And yet we may not sustain the discernment to understand what God is doing. And then we will be like a people robbed, a people defrauded, a people cheated. Because we are unable to enter that which God wants us to enter. And so this is the assignment of the apostolic and the prophetic to be able to incline our ears and to receive that which God intends to do in the lives of his people per season and per time. And not just to be excited, but then to know how we need to align. You have been taught here that knowing what God wants to do is only one part. If God wants to heal you, you must know what you need to do to participate with that healing grace. If God wants to anoint you, if God wants to raise you an apostle, a prophet, God wants to, you know, empower you. It's important for you to not just know what God wants to do, but to understand how to partner with him. Partnership with God is how things, prophecies, seasons are manifest. We profit from seasons when we number one discern those seasons and number two we receive the strategy for partnership are we learning praise the name of the lord there are a few things that i want us to know about god number one the bible says in psalm 115 verse 16 psalm 115 verse 16 it says the heaven even the heavens are the Lord's. It says, but the earth hath he given unto the children of men. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, 
but the earth hath he given to the children of men. This is a very profound revelation. The meaning of that is that everything that will happen upon the earth, no matter how prophetic it is, God is going to use the instrument of men. Are we together now? He says the earth hath he given, not will he give. It's been given already. The earth has he given to the sons of men. It says, what is man that thou art mindful of, not the son of man that thou visitest him, that you have made him a little lower than the angels, a little lower than Elohim. You have crowned him with glory. You have crowned him with honor. Then it says, you have set him over the works of your hands. You have set him over the works of your hands. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28, in the making of man, the Bible says, and God bless that man. Listen, it says, verse 26, it says, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness and let them, the man now, have dominion over the earth, the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over the earth and everything that creeps upon the earth. When it has to do with the matters of the earth, it is the business of men. Are we together now? Every matter that is within the circumference of the earth is not just God dependent, it is men dependent. The matters of the earth is the business of men. The matters of the earth is or are the business of men. It's important for you to know that God can do without men but he has so designed a system that the moment his dealings, his happenings are to be made manifest upon the earth, he must find men and he will flow through men. This is very powerful. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 9, we're discussing the seasons of abundance. It says, moreover, the profit of the earth there is such a thing in the Bible as the profit of the earth. That means the earth has been embedded with treasures, all kinds of treasures. And the Bible says in designing that system, God intended that the profit of the earth becomes for all. Are we together now? The profit of the earth is not for some, it's not for kings, it's not for nobles, it's not for westerners. The profit of the earth, please leave that scripture there, is for all. It says even the king himself is served by that which comes from the field. This immediately tells you that God is a God of portions. God is a God of portions. That means everyone he allows to find expression upon the earth there are portions allotted for every man are we together when the nation of israel came out of uh, egypt joshua moses started and joshua was mandated to apportion lands unto them it was in the bible that joshua would apportion lands unto them in fact i think that should be joshua 13 and verse 1 I hope I got that right. He was already old, but there were still portions of land. Now Joshua was old and stricken in age, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet much land to be possessed. And he started advising him on how to distribute that land. The entire chapter 13 was the distribution of the land to various tribes. God is a God of portions. That means if you ever found yourself upon the surface of the earth, I tell you, there is a portion for you allotted in God's economy. And if you, whether or not you will access it in your lifetime, it's a different discussion altogether. But know this for a fact, that God does not create people who are blessed even economically, at the expense of others. That is a Babylonian system. Every time you see God's system, you will see that none lacked. That was the strategy of the early church. Are we together? Economic stratification is not the strategy of the kingdom. It is the system of cosmos, the Babylonian antichrist system that robs others and deprives others and then wealth circulates around the hands of a few. But that was not so from the beginning. 
And if God is speaking prophetically that you have stepped into a season of abundance, then it's important for you to know how to get your portion from the earth. Do you believe that? The profit of the earth is for all. Even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. Hallelujah. Now, I spoke one time in this place on the subject of financial captivity. And I want to make a recap. There are very important points that I want to bring out that I believe will help to connect us to the prophetic word that God has brought to us. I was really excited when I woke up from my dream. I rejoiced for myself, I rejoiced for Koinonia, and I rejoiced for you too. Hallelujah. Because it's with joy we draw from the wells of salvation. And there are a few things that I did say that I want you to please pay attention to. I spoke about a few factors that are responsible for lack and want and poverty. And let me plead that you rewrite, re relearn these principles again as we discuss this important prophetic subject. Because just because God has spoken does not mean you will come into that experience. There are a number of reasons why many believers, in spite of the prophetic season, the advantage of the season, they will remain in lack and want. They will remain beggarly. And I want to run through some of those reasons I wrote there. Are you ready? Number one. These are the factors responsible for poverty, for lack, for want. In spite of the fact that the Bible says that the Lord is our shepherd, and as such, we should not be in want. The first reason I gave you, and I'm repeating it now, is ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. You want to put that down very quickly. The first reason why believers are incapacitated and limited economically, in spite of God's economic program for the excelling of the saints, is that they are ignorant of God's financial system or they have incomplete knowledge. So the first reason is ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Very quickly, let me give you number two. The second reason why many believers are in poverty, they are in lack and want, is the absence of value that is needed and useful. Please write that down. That's a very, very important point to note. The absence of value that is needed and useful. We live in a world where your value is what gives you a space. If you do not have value that is needed and useful, you will most likely remain in lack and want. Are you ready for number three? The third reason I gave you, and I'm repeating it now for your hearing and learning, is lack of productivity and excellence. This is the third reason why many believers are kept perpetually in poverty, lack and want. Lack of productivity. What is productivity? Converting your value to products and services, serving them with excellence to a targeted consumer base. This is what we call productivity. Just because you have discovered your value does not make it rewardable. It is at the point of that conversion that your value becomes rewardable. Are we together? I'm running through the list. So number one, I said ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Number two, the absence of value that is needed and useful. Number three, lack of productivity and excellence. Can I give you number four? And I'm going to dwell a bit on that tonight as we delve into this very serious prophetic subject. The absence of strategic relationships. The absence of strategic relationships. The fourth reason why believers are kept in lack and want in poverty and penury is that they lack strategic relationships. I remember when we discussed this subject, we considered John chapter 5 and verse 7. The man at Bethesda said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. That was his problem. He knew where the solution was, but the man to help and assist him was not there. Number five, the fifth reason why believers end up in lack, want, poverty is the bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment 
or the absence or the lack of spiritual empowerment. There is an empowerment component to wealth and abundance in all its ramifications. And perhaps I should go ahead of myself to tell you that when we talk about abundance, we're not limiting it to finance alone. I hope you know that by now. That when we talk about abundance, abundance deals with supplies and sufficiency, not just finances alone. In the kingdom, when we discuss the subject of abundance, we are not limiting it to just finance. Finance is an important component, but there are many people who have finance, but they do not have abundance. Abundance captures finance, but it also captures all everything that makes for your sufficiency. Bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment is the fifth reason why believers end up poor. They do not know that when it has to do with the business of accessing finance as a Christian in a bedeviled world in an antichrist system, you will need an empowerment from heaven. Are we together now? There is such a thing as the power to get wealth. There is such a thing as the power to prosper. Number six, we identify the sixth reason why believers, all men really, but believers remain in lack, in want, and poverty as impatience. The sixth reason is impatience. Impatience. The Bible says, he that is hasty to be wealthy will not be innocent. God is a God of speed. God brings acceleration. In fact, that is the thrust of our discussion tonight. God can bring men into accelerated blessings. But God does not rush people arbitrarily. The passion to want to make it instantaneously is what robs men of following due spiritual process. And the Bible says if you follow such a path, you will not be innocent. Can I give you the seventh and final reason? Laziness. Laziness. What is laziness? The laxity to think, the laxity to take action, that inertia, that refusal to engage your mind, to engage your energy productively is called laziness. You would be surprised how many believers are lazy always. They are lazy spiritually. They are lazy in terms of engaging their minds. They are lazy in terms of submitting themselves to the discipline of learning, the discipline of putting knowledge to action. And so many of them become poor. Allow me to do a final rundown on the list. Number one, ignorance of God's financial system. Number two, the absence of value that is needed and useful. Number three, lack of productivity and excellence. Number four, the absence of strategic relationships. Number five, the bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment. Six, impatience. Final reason seven, laziness. May you be delivered from all this. Amen. Shout a believers, amen. amen. May you be delivered from all this. Amen. Now, please let me have your attention. I have taught you in this house that even though we are in the world, the Bible says we are not of the world. Do you know what that means? There is a system that governs the earth as we know. There is a system that governs the thinking of the earth. The policies that have framed the economic system of nations uh, is largely antichrist. Are we together now? Now, some of those policies are great and profitable, but that you are in a system that did not factor honor to God in designing that system. So you would find out that for everyone who comes, um, who declares the Lordship of Christ over their lives, you are you are working within a system that is already against you by default. Listen very carefully. The world system is founded on number one, hatred, disdain for God and his ways. You have to get used to this. The world system, it was not designed to honor God. It does not factor the supremacy of the God of heaven. And so when you find yourself as a believer 
within the cosmos, within this system, you will find out that your loyalty to God will make you to conflict with many things that are the norms of the system. For instance, the world system is a system that was founded on selfishness. Say after me, selfishness. Selfishness and self-centeredness is not an unusual thing in the world system. It's only unusual to you as a believer. That means you are immersed in a system where you would usually not find anyone participate in your destiny until they see how it can profit them. Are we together? You will hardly find people who are kind to you indefinitely. There usually will be something they are looking onto. That is the world that we're dwelling. The world system is a system that is immersed in wickedness. Even your Bible says the whole world lies in wickedness. What does that mean? Your compassion is not factored. No, it doesn't matter whether you are destroyed in the process. Men have an obsession to become. Men have an obsession to advance. Men have an obsession to prosper. It does not matter who is wounded, who is hurt, who is destroyed, or who even dies in the process. This is the desperation that we find in our world. So when you are angry that someone cheated, to get to where he is or someone was corrupt that unfortunately that is the system but now when the believer comes into Christ part of your loyalty to the kingdom is that you must pledge that you are not going to subscribe to that system there is an implication to that pledge when you come into Christ and now say I will walk I will live a life that is corrupt free no bribery no corruption are we together for instance you are occupying an office and you have access to just manipulate one figure and one billion naira is yours quietly but because you have pledged your allegiance to the god of the bible the first thing that will suffer is you and your children and everything around you until you now learn the kingdom system now the danger the trouble with church is that on one hand we tell people to walk in holiness and righteousness void of all of these antichrist practices but we do not show them the nobler and more superior kingdom system so on one hand they avoid all of those things and they clearly become and remain victims they become cheated are we together now it ought not to be so there is a nobler kingdom system. Listen, let me tell you. If you understand God's kingdom system, you will never admire Satan's system of prospering men because it's by far insultive, it's by far degrading. There is a nobler, more superior kingdom system. But until you know it, you will remain a victim of regrets from not partnering with Satan. Are we together? I've seen people who have become and remain victims. It has affected their marriages, affected their children, affected the education of their children. They had an opportunity to compromise, but on account of their stance for God, they refused. But now, you think about this. If you are making that much sacrifice for God and he calls himself love, it means that there is a system he has designed already for you. Am I right on that? In our nation here we have, and I thank God for that, the police force and the paramilitary, there is a growing, there is a growing, growing passion for integrity. And right now we keep seeing in the news where perhaps people will try to bribe a police officer and he will refuse. You see, they, and, and, and for many of them who refuse, you see that eventually their superiors reward them, no matter how small. That reward system now started showing that integrity has value. God will never tell you to abstain from, to avoid, you know, anything that corrupts your integrity and not give you a superior alternative that brings you to a decent life with dignity. That is not the God of the Bible. Are we together now? That your wife should never look at you and say, so we are in this state now simply because you said no to the Antichrist system. It should never be so. 
But because most believers do not know God's way of doing things, he does not know, we, we don't know God's way of bringing us into the abundance, bringing us into prophecy. Many believers keep crediting their weakness, even financially, economically. They make it look like it's God that is, God should be blamed. He's the reason why I am where I am. I'm telling you, God sent me to tell you it's not true. God has no hand in the calamity and financial catastrophe of many people. He's already made a way. It's up to you to understand that way and engage it by faith. I hope you know the day an individual gets healed, that's not the day Jesus died for the person's healing. That was the day he discovered that truth or had access to the anointing that will bring him into that experience. That is the same thing too, economically. The day you prosper is not the day God prospered you. It is the day you found the truth. You engage the truth. Ye shall know the truth. Have you forgotten that scripture? It says the truth shall make you free. If you live a defeated life financially, you will still go to heaven. And then you will discover that God has spoken great things concerning you, his Zion. But you did not maximize your life spiritually. I'm told of a story, I think it's just of some fiction to illustrate how that a gentleman one time was taking a voyage from one nation to another and when he got there they noticed that he was not coming for lunch and dinner within the ship he locked himself and he was just praying he had starved for days without food because unknown to him that the train ticket covered his meals and he did not know that and he would lock up himself, starving with a lot of pain, getting lean, getting sick. And one time, I think one of the, you know, attendants came to knock his door. And he opened and he said, we notice your seat has been empty. And the person said, well, um, I'm not sure I have any seat here. Are you not a, a bona fide passenger here? Yes. Did you pay? Yes. There's a provision for you. To enjoy your meals and the person said well i don't know mine is just to arrive safely now whether or not that person knew did not stop his seat from being vacant my goodness how many believers do not know that god is a god of portions that god is kind enough the bible tells us watch this it says if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children just because you are not aware does not mean the provision is not there can God ask you to start a vision and not create the system of empowerment? What sort of a God is that? Can God empower you to start a family, grant you access to children and not empower you to be able to take care of them with dignity? That is not the God we serve. We must not allow our ignorance misrepresent God. Are we together? It says, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us honor and glory and power and riches and blessing. That's what he died to receive for us. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us. He received all this for us. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. This is what he received for us. Now, whether you walk in the experience of these things or not, is another subject. But it's important for you to know that you have stepped into a season where God wants to see you step into abundance so that you are able to serve the purposes of the, of the Lord. If you believe that, shout amen. amen. Now, I want to show you something very powerful. In this kingdom, please let me have your attention. In this kingdom, there is a difference between wealth, abundance, and kingdom wealth. There is a difference. A difference between wealth, abundance, and kingdom wealth. They are not the same. And I'm going to tell you what the difference is. For many people, when they approach the subject of abundance and the subject of wealth, or the subject of well-being generally they think that the way the world approaches this subject is the way the saints should approach the subject that is an error already 
the believer is governed by a set of beliefs there is an understanding that if you do not have you are not a true believer are we together there is a difference between wealth abundance and kingdom wealth and abundance that word kingdom makes all the difference I have taught you here and it bears repeating that you must understand the purpose of the blessings of the Lord in the kingdom you are already at a risk if you try to journey on the path to wealth and abundance without knowing why the first thing you receive as a believer is an orientation as to why God prepared an economic system for you the difference between carnality and a mundane pursuit that ends you up in the flesh or that which empowers you to be an effective witness is disorientation. I have taught you that there are three essential reasons why God blesses the saints, why he opens us up to abundance, sufficiency and wealth. Can I repeat it for your learning? Number one, to live a comfortable life. Write that down and never forget it. God is not against your living comfortably. Know this. God wants you and I to live a comfortable life whilst we serve him. It is the reason why sacrifice means a lot to him because you were not designed to live that way. God wants you to live a comfortable life. Number two, the second assignment behind your accessing the supplies of heaven in all its ramifications, whether finances or otherwise, the second reason is so that you can advance the cause of the kingdom. My God, please write that. Start it if you are writing and don't forget that. A bigger reason, a bigger motivation as to why you must manifest the blessings, why you must access finances, resources and abundance in the kingdom is so that you can make resources available for this kingdom come project. I will repeat it again for your hearing that the name of the Lord Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Anybody who is incapacitated will not be able to do much for the kingdom in this end time. I tell you this from the integrity of scripture. If you are incapacitated financially, you will not be able to do much. Not for the kingdom, not for yourself, not for your family. Poverty and lack and want robs men of dignity. It reduces men to look like lower animals. Hallelujah. Advancement of the kingdom is the second reason why we are blessed in this kingdom. The third and final reason why God grants us access to resources and why he's bringing us into this prophetic season of abundance is to be able to be a blessing to the world in a practical and a definite way. Write that down, please. God wants you to be a blessing to all and sundry. According to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God wants you to be a blessing to people beyond the walls of religion, beyond the walls of Christianity, that society is able to experience the impact of the love of Jesus through your life and that principally through your giving. Show me a believer who loves Jesus, who loves society and has the means, the economic means. I show you one who will be a blessing to all, not just to Christians, not just to believers. There are many of you who already have compassionate hearts, but your limitations as far as communicating love and benevolence is lack of resources. And Satan wants it so because he knows you will never be able to help anyone with an empty hand. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The motivation behind your desire for wealth and abundance, 
must be purified by this revelation must be purified by this revelation there are many believers who like money they love it to a point of obsession they are carnally minded driven by money usually they like preachers talking about subjects like this not necessarily because they love god not necessarily because they love his program they just love the idea of being rich they love the idea of being of means they love the idea of being better than someone that is not the kingdom's approach to the subject of abundance God's goal is not for you to have more money than brother A or sister B and then flaunt it, marketing the flesh. No, that's not God's goal. God's goal is not just for you to celebrate that you have become, you have arrived, or as we call it in our vernacular here, you are blown. All that subject is complete nonsense from a kingdom standpoint. There is a greater and nobler approach. And this is what I'm teaching you. I tell you that there are many believers who will never access the supplies of heaven. The reason is not that they are not hardworking. The reason is not that they are not productive. There is a corruption in their heart. You have been weighed by God and you have been found to be better off without those resources. God has seen that if these resources step into your hand, you will be a danger to yourself. You will be a danger to your family, a danger to the body of Christ. It's like giving a small child a grenade and that child can detonate it plain and blow up himself, blow up everyone there. So God educates you and in order of priority, before he shows you his ways, he has to culture your understanding. The reason why I grant you access to financial resources, influence, any kind of supply, is number one for your comfort number two so that you will provide resources for kingdom advance number three so that you can extend and reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way are we learning church is now quiet you rejoice when you heard that it was a season of abundance but now as the demands are being unveiled, believers always run away from demands. Because to many believers, they believe all it takes is just a prophetic word. If I say, open your hands and stretch it towards me now. In a hurry. You will even wake your baby and stretch his own tiny hands too. So that the baby receives his portion and that is good. I hope I'm able to do that at the end of the service. But before then, before then, this stronghold in the mind that is stopping you from stepping into prophecy. I don't know what ministry has struggled financially. I don't know what family is struggling financially, but in the name of Jesus Christ, by this unction that has landed through this prophecy, you come out of shame and reproach. You come out of shame and reproach in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Listen. Let me honestly confess to you, in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of honesty, reject poverty. Reject lack. Reject want. Are we together? Reject it. It will rob you of living a life of dignity. There are some of you now who are sick. No machine can diagnose what is wrong with you because what is wrong with you is not from your body. It is the pressure of rent, the pressure of a court case. You are not able to pay this, whatever it is. I've seen people depressed as a result of this economic thing. And do you know, it is a strategy. Every time I've taught you here, when Satan sees that your concentration towards spiritual things is heightening, increasing, what he does is he does something to your finances so that you, you leave your passion for God and you have to turn to face the matter of making ends meet. One of the most destruct, destructive strategies of Satan is to make your finances deplete indefinitely. You will lose concentration. You will not be able to pray again, not be able to fast again. As a man of God, God is telling you to teach on the Holy Spirit, hold a crusade and you check your balance and your balance is nothing encouraging. You will most likely disobey that instruction. Are we together? 
Remember, I have a covenant under God to you that you will not, among the many things that you are to become, is your spiritual vibrancy in order of priority, but that you will become a people who are financially robust. And I say this without any sense of apology. The word of God will make it happen. You will keep watch yourself, watching yourself as you evolve, as you become. You are hearing the truth. There's no restraint when your heart is right. There's no restraint when the requisite knowledge is upon you. There's no restraint when the grace that makes it happen comes upon you. You are not the first to step into this inheritance. Many have come, many have gone. Do you believe this? When he talks about the season of abundance, the first thing that needs to be corrected is purpose. Purpose. Why is God opening the floodgates of heaven? Why is God bringing Koinonia? Why is God bringing Joshua Selman? Why is God bringing you to a season of abundance? Just because he likes the idea of money? No. Just because he wants you to get a mansion and flaunt it around? No. Believers, you must subscribe to a renewed orientation for God's sake. Know why God prospers people. Reject carnality. It becomes, you become an enemy to yourself. The moment your obsession for money becomes greater than your obsession for God and the things of God, you are not in God's program again. There are people who have been tested by God 1 million, 10 million, 50 million stepped into their hands and it was a test just to watch them and God saw that their hearts were no longer with him. Why should I pray when there is 50 million in my account? Why should I fast when I already have two houses? An estate is on his way. So when they say lift your hands to receive you just smile and pity those who are coming and god says i've seen your heart you will not go far believe me i know what i'm saying there are many people who are called by god to be champions are we together merchants of the gospel champions custodians of the wealth of the kingdom and because their hearts became corrupted by the naira and kobo the tea and bread unfortunately this includes preachers unfortunately this includes businessmen and i hope not you for many people because of the corruption of their heart you know generally once you are rich people love you once you are rich you become a king even without a crown and so we we love we look forward to being celebrated because some of us came from wounded childhoods no one loved you you never had an applause you never took first position in class never had an opportunity to receive an applause and so we press we hustle as we use that term very destructive term in fact don't use that term as a believer no we are called to walk circumspect as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time because the days are evil and the way we redeem the time is by knowing on time what the will of God is is someone learning so many believers like the idea of money they press they travel from pillar to post. There are people who the only thing that gets their attention is to talk about money. Money, 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 money. Once you are not talking about money, it doesn't matter whether you talk about Jesus, the cross, rapture, souls, that's none of their business. Quite honestly. All they are concerned about is money. And you know what? The entire pursuit for money is simply that they want to use it as a ladder to have a sense of worship. That you have arrived is too small a reason God's first assignment in stepping into this prophecy is to purify your heart to purify your motive someone shall purify my heart you wouldn't believe that this should be discussed in something that has to do with money say it again purify my heart I prayed and I cried to God and I said any money that you will bring to my life and to this ministry that will make me forget about you, grow in pride, look down on men, 
and leave you may it never come to me may that demonic kind of money never come to me some of you are afraid of saying amen, amen. if you can't say amen say I repent I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord I will bow to you to no other God but you Hallelujah Father, what is it about finances that you can't bring me into? And God is saying, I, I, I own the cattle on a thousand hill. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. Are we together now? First Chronicles 29, 11 and 12. I'm tempted to just show you that scripture. Someone must repent tonight. As a way of stepping into prophecy. We are going to repent from carnality and the love, the mundane pursuit for money, just for self-aggrandizement. God's program is greater than that. Let's read together. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory uh -huh, and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted above it all. Read verse 12 convincingly. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. Uh -huh. And in thy hand is power and might, my God. And in thy hand is... And to give strength to all. God has the power to make men great. I know that... Many people believe you don't need God to prosper. It depends on what you define as prosperity. You don't need God to transact value and to be rewarded. You are right. But the fulfillment and the joy that comes with prospering God's way, only God can make that happen. Paul can plant, Apollos can water, but only God brings increase. The kind of increase that takes away sorrow, the kind of increase where you can still roll and worship God as a billionaire, as a millionaire, and people will look at you and say, what is wrong with you? You are already blessed. Why are you still an usher in church, whereas you have estates? You would tell them, the reason why I came to church was not to get money. I came because I loved him. My prospering is just a sign effect but it will never affect my passion for God I've seen people who change in the presence of so little so little so little a little tea and bread on your table and God cannot get your attention again how can I sweep the house of God as a CEO and heaven watches you and says the intention is not even for you to be a CEO. The intention is to be exalted above the nations of the earth. But the corruption in your heart. Hallelujah. There are people today, if God should trust with 10 million, 100 million, 50 million, even 1 million, you will not greet anybody again. Including a man of God. Yes, come. I hear you are looking for money for something. I'm going to donate 10 million, but kneel down first. <laughs> and while that is happening, heaven is watching you. So this was all about, this was all what the prayer was about. So your fasting was just about this. So all your Bible study was just about this. You reduce God to become Naira and Kobo? Is this all about it? No. Are we learning? For someone, God is speaking to you. I'm staying to press here because I, by the privilege of God's grace, let me tell you, I've worked with God a bit. And I know how to partner with prophecy. When God speaks, don't just rejoice over what he has said. Start aligning yourself. And to align yourself in order of priority is not just talking about money. That purifying of your heart 
Let me tell you the truth. God is still looking for men he can trust with resources. But many believers have disappointed him because of the pride that emanates in the presence of plenty. My heart is yours. My mind is yours. My will is yours. You're the king of my life. You're the king of my life. Can God give you 10 naira today and say, so that 10 naira back? And you say, Your Majesty, it may be painful, but it belongs to you. And God will say it was only a test. I don't need your money. You have qualified for the next level. Now 50 naira can come. And you say, Lord, even if it is 100 naira that comes, it still belongs to you. There is a part of this wealth thing that is not about business. It's not about buying and selling. It's a covenant transaction. Please listen to me. I know what I'm saying. There is a part of this finance thing that is mysteriously spiritual. It has nothing to do with buying and selling. I'm not a dummy. I understand the economic system of the world. You believe me on that with all humility. But there is a side to this thing, bar that is not selling a car for profit or building a mall. <clears throat> that one, that business is done in the spirit. Is the same thing that happens between the kings of this world and Satan too. They can start by transacting, but there are certain levels of wealth. Believe me, it's not buying and selling that brings you there. No. It's spirit transactions that ends with a covenant. We are going to open you to this world. We are going to open you to the wealth of the cosmos. What are we going to get in return? And you say in return, I will fund the program of Satan. Stamp it, stamp it with blood and doors open. Satan took Jesus into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world and said, all this I will give to you. He didn't say if you buy a container of palm oil, red oil, and sell it across to Ghana or to another nation. He said, if you will bow to me. If Jesus quietly bowed to Satan, you will not know. You will just see that dominion has returned to him. Do you know there are many other people who have been called like that to those chambers in the spirit? You want to become famous? You want to become this and this spirit to say the condition is bow to me, sell your soul. And they say, what nonsense is my soul? And they make the mistake of Esau. What is, what is my soul? What is my relationship with Jesus? No, I need money. That's all I want. What do I need to do? Kill your child with speed. Kill your wife with speed. Kill your husband. Who else should I kill? Because this thing, I must get it. You would think I'm joking. I would not stand on this stage and be talking to the globe and joke, and I'm joking. It's true. The same way when God wants to trust you with wealth, genuine wealth, true riches, I tell you it's beyond business. It may flow through the channel of business, but God is going to call you to the chambers of the spirit. He will tell you, I have a program and I'm looking for a treasurer. And your own, listen, yours is going, to, your own will say, Lord, I want you to walk upon my heart so that you can trust me that with the wealth of the kingdom as it comes, it will be beyond pride, building an empire. No, this is beyond just having houses and making a name and becoming CEO of XYZ. And God will say, can I trust you that souls will be won? Can I trust you that homes will be mended? Can I trust you that children will eat? Can I trust you that you will lift up my name? And with the frailty of your heart, this is what we call covenant wealth. Covenant wealth is not wealth that happens by you just tithing and giving. No, the covenant there is to understand the purpose that you are bound that I will never forget why. The why is what makes it covenant, not the practice within it. Understanding the purpose is what makes it covenant. 
So God can tell you, I want to trust you with the wealth of nations. That I will make you as an individual to become like a nation. And you say, Lord, what is the condition? The condition is that your heart will remain mine loving me. The condition is that every time I make a demand, you will say, yes, sir. The condition is that while the world looks at you in admiration, you will point them back to me and you will say, yes, Lord. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Oh, yes, Lord. We will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. And once you are done with that business in the spirit, now you can come out, you can buy and sell, you can do whatever you do, and a mysterious force that will be clear before men that this one bar is not just transaction, there is an invisible force. That force is God's part of the covenant, insisting that you rise. Does not matter what the economy is. Let me tell you the truth. Believers, please hear me. I'm not here to play with your intelligence. Before I show you the other thing I want to show you, when God says it is a season of abundance, the agriculturist is not the one who makes the earth to produce. The agriculturist only masters planting. Once he drops that seed and covers it, the remaining air, there are parts he cannot explain. There is a hand within the earth. It is God's covenant with the earth that partners with that business of agriculture that as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. So when you come to the farm and say, I have a bumper harvest, 30 trucks of rice, 30 trucks of maize. Uh -uh. It was not all about buying and selling. You partnered with the spirit realm. There are many of us here that need to step into a level of abundance for the sake of the kingdom. But what God is doing right now is a circumcision. Because if God should prosper you now the way you want, sincerely, it will be a risk to your own spiritual life. There are men who when they prosper, their marriages will go down. Because in the presence of that abundance, no. Their wives will become slaves. There are women, if they prosper the way they are, with that uncircumcised heart, their husbands will become their children. There are children, if they prosper, are we together now? Without that circumcision of the heart, many things will go wrong. Place your hand on your chest and pray in one minute. God, you can trust me. Walk upon my heart. Walk upon greed. Walk upon selfishness. Pray. Walk upon carnality. The desire to tell lies because of money. The desire to bribe. The desire to kill. The desire to be corrupt. Oh, it doesn't matter you say. It does. If it is God's way, it does. Lay your hand on your chest and those praying. Cry unto God. I want to step into a season of abundance. Walk upon my heart. I confess my greed. I confess carnality. I confess materialism. I confess a desire to outshine that my, my reason for wanting abundance is because I want to show I have arrived. It says, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Someone pray. Pray. Pray, pray, oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, for you, oh Lord, set my life in order for you, for you, I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your ways Oh Lord Set my heart on fire for you 
Are you praying? We like this word millionaire. We love it. We are obsessed about it. We like that word billionaire. When they say you are a billionaire, people clap and smile. They look at you with admiration. But it has destroyed many. Billionaire, they say. Millionaire, they say. When you hear the word, there are those who when they hear this word, it's like some dopamine. It drives them crazy. Please ask the Lord to purge your heart. Any money that will take away my relationship with you, anything that will cause me to be worse than I am spiritually, may it never come around my dwelling. Never come around my dwelling. Is someone praying? Someone who loves God more than money, loves God more than business. Never come around my dwelling. The kind of money that you will not have peace in your heart, the kind of money that you will know that someone died for you to have it someone was defrauded for you to have it you told a lie you cheated someone to have it the fruits of corruption and dishonesty and falsehood hallelujah The first assignment in this season of abundance is for God to find a people he can trust. Not a people he loves. He already loves you. But can he trust you? Years ago, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Believe me, this is one of the cardinal secrets of laying gold as dust. Many of you are business people and the thing is not working. You are not lazy. You are productive. But God loves you more than your business. He loves you. He does not want your heart to falter. He does not want you to degenerate spiritually. He would rather suspend the manifestation of that prosperity until you hear this sermon. There are many of you, it's not the devil stopping your promotion. I tell you, it's not Satan. You have been weighed. You were already quarter to going out of the things of God. By the time they now promote you to become an MD, God will not even see you again. Church will not see you again. You will not listen to anybody again. Nobody can tell you come again. You say me? That was my former self. You are talking to the one who was broke. That jeep parked outside belongs to me. That estate there belongs to me. And God says nonsense. You are a tenant. The earth belongs to the Lord. Do you know what made someone in the Bible to be called a rich fool? He was not the rich. The fool was that he did not understand the purpose. Why did God give you dominion over his resources? Why did God make you a captain over his inheritance? I live perpetually in this consciousness. That everything God ever places in these hands, it truly belongs to him. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a preacher. Fight greed now before it tears you into pieces. Fight selfishness now before it turns you to become someone who is not a believer. God wants your heart beyond your offering, beyond your tithe, beyond your profit what he's looking for right now i hope i'm not wasting your time god gave us a word that is a season of abundance now the first key is not just to show you some dynamics you are operating in a system that is not the world system can god tell you now to empty your account and you say yes sir i'm not asking you to do it but can you do it if you cannot do it go back for a retreat but if an opportunity to buy a nice house comes, can you empty your account for it? Yes, that means that house is your God. 
whatever you cannot do for God and you can do for something else even if it's yourself anything you can give all for is your God you don't like what you are hearing listen to it all. what then is the pride this is my business this is my ministry I am this and that no believers don't talk like that because they understand the transactions that happen in the spirit don't get me wrong there are benefits that come there is glory in riches there is glory in wealth but let me tell you the truth the believer who understands why God releases resources will know that number one God releases resources for your comfort number two the advancement of his program do you know sometimes I become very ashamed and even embarrassed that believers have to be cajoled to give it's become a very dirty subject of debate unfortunately even within the church space it was supposed to be an orientation that responsible believers have that you never have to coerce and manipulate because that should even be the bedrock of your understanding before you're rising financially that I am your treasurer Lord as you trust me you can be sure that a portion of your faithfulness over my life will be reflected in the advancement of your program. I for one, I cannot imagine any notable kingdom activity happening around me and my resources will not be part of it. And it's not because of what God has done today. No, it's been an orientation. That God is doing something like this? No, my one naira must be represented there. If it is too small, you can use it to buy a bottle of water. You can buy a recharge card and make a call for that program to happen, for instance. But there are many believers, this, this is how we are. God, drop my own portion and we collect it, another one. It's not enough. Please add more in Jesus' name. You said whatever we ask, in Jesus name more again I'm not satisfied you just keep adding when I'm and God says what do you take me as but there are others who would not even be asking they will just cry before him and say father if ever you are looking for someone to advance your program I may not be able to preach but if you can trust me with resources I will take care of my children take care of everyone and see to it that as far as it depends on me that your program goes forward and God says this is the kind of person I'm looking for I'm going to show you how these blessings come but it's for you to know now that the major hindrance is not that your business is not working let me tell you the truth because there are many of us you've been praying what is the missing link why is it that this door of finances does not open let me tell you the average person in our world today is knowledgeable enough about value and our world has become so networked that any value you have should at least bring you something if your hand is still empty it's not the problem is not with your transactional ability is that there is business in the spirit you have not done I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whoever you want to help, Lord, you can help through me. I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forever. you that from a kingdom standpoint and from a financial standpoint there are four realms of living financially 
The least realm is called survival. That is a dangerous realm. You should not be there. The next realm is called comfort. The third realm is called luxury. The final realm is called extravagance. Both um, struggle, what's the first realm again? Survival and extravagance is not the believer's zone. You should not be found there. The believer is only giving liberty to shuttle between comfort and luxury, and that is sufficient. The moment you get to a realm of extravagance as a believer, you are sinning against God because the resources don't belong to you. It says glorify God with your body, which is the Lord's. That also includes the fruits that come out of you. The believer is a steward. Just because you have money does not mean you waste. Any believer that wastes money is sinning against God because you do not know, number one, that he's a giver and you do not know the purpose for it. It is okay for a believer to be comfortable. It is okay for a believer to step into a life of luxury. When God blesses you, don't allow people to blackmail you. You can live a good life. You can live a comfortable life. Are we together? Anybody who is angry should go to God. The Bible says, does any man lack wisdom? He says, let him go to God who giveth liberally. So don't get blackmailed by all kinds of sentiments when God helps you. If you are helped by God, you are helped by God. It's as simple as that. However, however, listen, you must know that that transition from survival, comfort, luxury, and extravagance, only unbelievers, an antichrist system uses extravagance to attract people. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. When you are uncontrollably lavish and indisciplined in the presence of wealth there there is there is an engineering through that lifestyle that draws people to serve satan but the believer is not like that it doesn't matter how many billion god gives you if you don't have anything to do with that money the next thing in your mind is kingdom there is no believer who should ever say i have too much money there's nothing to do with it you have become a sinner instantly because there is the program of God is highly capital intensive. Highly capital intensive. Talk about souls to be won, crusades. You talk about churches to be built. You talk about God's program, equipment to be bought. My goodness. And you see the world system will not fund God's program. Let me tell you that for, for sure. Just have that at the back of your mind. Satan will not get up and say, take and promote the name of Jesus. He will not do that. If you want to promote another name, he can say, take. But once it is the name of Jesus Christ, uh -uh. how do you promote the name of Jesus? And the sponsor is Satan himself. That means the believer, if without this advantage, you are already disadvantaged. Are we together? Will Satan come and sponsor your children to love the Lord, to serve the Lord, to live for Jesus? No way. Will Satan come to give you rest, to transit from a tenant to become a landlord and have the privilege to serve Jesus and worship there? That means you don't know who he is. The Bible says he's a thief and that when he comes, he does not call Satan a giver. Satan does not give. He only uses giving as a tool to take your soul. What shall it profit you if you gain to lose? You gain the whole world, but you lose your soul. So if you look at it with respect to gaining the world, you will call Satan a giver. But when you check your soul, you see that it was a bad business that you did. Hallelujah. There are people today who have joined all kinds of antichrist clubs and societies. And it was because of money or for the purpose of making money and they tell you the only condition is become part of a b c and you quietly join all kinds of things to the detriment of your soul i say it again the kind of money that will take you to hell may the god of my covenant never bring it to your life That you love the Lord beyond finances. You love the Lord beyond resources. You love the Lord beyond having or not having. 
your economic system should never affect your relationship with God. Can we go to the next discussion? Seasons of abundance. When God is ready to bring you into seasons of abundance, how does he do it? This is what I want to show you now. What is the dynamics of manifesting the resources of God? Please follow carefully. I have shown you what I want to show you in another way now. Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. I'm going to tell you something that some of you may not believe, but I hope you do believe. It will not take long as long as you think for God to prosper you. Do you know why? We don't have that much time again. Are we together? If in your mind what you are thinking is Warren Buffett and then by the time you are 85 years old, then my discussion should not even concern you because it's not you I'm talking to. I'm talking about people Based on, I, I, you remember the dream I told you? That it was the ground, a seed that was sown and quickly, quickly, it just came and became a giant tree. I believe that. And I believe that there are people who need to step into that. The reason is because destiny is a function of time. Please pay attention now. Destiny is a function of time. Destiny is a function of time. I'm not against the world system, don't get me wrong. It's a system whose result has been proven. But the, the urgency that is upon the saints and God's program cannot give you the liberty to start on that wise again. It will not work. We don't even have that much time left. There has to be a strategy by the Spirit. Are we together? Can I show you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Write this down. The secret to stepping into accelerated wealth is strategic destiny connections. The secret to stepping into accelerated wealth is strategic destiny connections. The secret to stepping into accelerated wealth is strategic destiny connections. I started my discussion by showing you a scripture that says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. Remember the scripture? But that the earth hath he given to the children of men. That means your relationship with Jesus, watch this now, and your understanding his economic system secures that blessing upon you but to manifest it in your life here and now as prophecy has shown depends on strategic destiny connections say that after me strategic destiny connections koinonia body of christ this is the world of men this is the world of men Prosperity happens through the ministry of men. Accelerated wealth happens through the ministry of men. If you don't obtain grace to have strategic destiny connections, you will remain poor even though you are productive. Please understand this. Do 
those that will be stepping into prophetic dimensions of wealth will be people who are valuable with wisdom but in addition to it you see I have learned and I have taught you here that what you call business is not transaction with things it is the business of men every business on earth is the business of men whether you call it oil and gas the business of men banking the business of men agriculture the business of men mining the business of men it is men that give value to the products it is men that give value to the transactions when you buy or sell at the back end of what you are doing is a man kill every man on earth and then all the atms should be given to you all the bank safes should be open all the mining sites should be open they will be useless because there is no man if you have products and you don't have men you are not going to be wealthy did you hear what i said if you have ideas and you don't have men you are not going to be wealthy when god wants to show you mercy whether as a man of god let me tell you the truth he is going to empower you with grace but he will grant you access to strategic relationships relationships that believe in your vision relationships that believe what you stand for and those men will invest into you invest into your relationship when the resources come the wisdom to manage them is already there that's where being valuable comes in The nation of Israel remained poor and beggarly for many years even though they were a covenant people because they did not understand the economic system of the kingdom. They would come out of Egypt with plenty overnight and yet there were many instances where they were still poor and beggarly and became slaves again. Do you know that the nation of Israel became like fugitives? It was David that gave Israel a city till today in Israel their flag is the star of David it was David that gave them a resting place because they did not really understand the economic system of the kingdom when I learned how prophecy makes is manifest financially it is not about things it is about men the reason why you need to hold something in your hand is so that it will attract the men did you hear what I said men men are the unfair advantage that God has placed in our world to help prophecies even financial prophecies to come to pass in the lives of people if you think all you will do is to save your way towards buying your house taking care of your children I assure you in this wicked world we are living in you may not build a house in your lifetime do you know that there are graduates that for 10, 20 years after graduation, they've not gotten a job? And even for those who have gotten a job, they are not able to do anything. See, I've had the honor by the privilege of God's grace to travel a bit. And this is not an African problem. I've traveled a bit. And the number one trouble for people is even getting to the basics of establishment. Satan wants it so. So you spend your entire life trying to make ends meet whether it's a house whether it's some means of mobility whether it's something for your children even in economies that their systems work there are people who are still victims because it's an antichrist system let me tell you the truth when god wants to help you there are people he has already helped god will bring strategic i call it strategic connection you are not the one who looks for it if you go around looking for rich people they will arrest you one day because there are some of you, you, you <laughs> some of you once someone does not have money cannot be your friend and you will use what I say now say confirmation you see now apostle has even agreed with me I can't surround myself with people suffering again be careful because God is still lifting men somebody you will laugh at today you will turn and find out he's the only help you have unfortunately you have insulted the person what happens if Joseph is the only one who can give you food and you already threw him in the well? What do you tell him as a prime minister? 
I've shown you that that model of strategic connections, we see it between Abraham and Lot. You remember? We see, do you know how Abraham prospered? I taught you here. Abimelech, go and read your Bible. Remember Abimelech wanted to carry his wife and God told him, if you touch that woman, you are dead. And as a reward, he gave him gifts, gave him several things. Lot went with him. He was benevolent enough to share. Lot's becoming wealthy was not a product of his wisdom. It was not a product of his value. It was that he was strategically connected to a man who had covenant with God. How about Ruth and Boaz? How about Esther? Are we together now? Mordecai was outside of the palace, but the day the king decided to draw him close, that man was celebrated overnight. Do you think Mordecai was not valuable? He was valuable. He saved the king, and yet he was not rewarded. Because the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread sometimes to them that are wise. When God wants to help you, I'm teaching you a powerful formula so that you will know how to engage in this prophecy. Does not mean to not be valuable, don't get me wrong. Does not mean to not build your value and transact as you do, but have it at the back of your mind that God gives men speed, not by putting them on chariots. He gives them speed by bringing those who are already a representation of your future and to make them like you and to connect with you in a way that allows them to release from their blessings to you. This is how the kingdom works. That in one day, you can step into a level of inheritance that will bless you. Why is God not afraid to bring that kind of speed? Because he has worked on your heart. So plenty does not destroy you again. Because your heart already belongs to him. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. And I don't mean to insult money. But this one one naira that keeps dropping like dew. Not much will ever happen for the kingdom like that. Not for your life, not for his program. The Antichrist system has a bank of wealth and they are prepared to fund anything that is against the program of God. Believers must have access to the resources of the kingdom. I will always make reference to all the various programs that we're organizing now by the grace of God. I know we are praying. I know you want to see Jesus revealed. But ladies and gentlemen, if I begin to tell you the economic implication of obedience, did you hear what I said? The economic implication of obeying God. Paul said, I, I was not negligent to this heavenly calling, but it takes a lot of resources. And that when God wants to help a man, beyond just giving you business ideas, he brings strategic men strategic men are even enhancers to your business your business prospers based on who you do the business with not just the business any business can make you a multi-millionaire any scriptural godly business can make you a millionaire and billionaire depending on who you do it with are we together so even using the works of your hands when god wants to help you he will help you to serve kings because the wealth of any nation is in the palace. As much as it's in the field, when it is extracted from the field, it is taken to the palace. That is where it is stored. And if you cannot access the palace, nor the heart of Pharaoh, you will remain poor. When you see me cry about favor all the time, and I teach you relationship principles all the time is because this is, is not one of the many ways. I tell you sincerely, it is the accelerator factor in your becoming prosperous. So when God says it is a season of abundance, that means he's bringing you greater wisdom. That means he's purging your heart. That means that he's granting the blessing upon the work of your hands. But more than that, it means that you must begin to pray. He says you ask for the rain at the time of the latter rain. When you see that the time has come, you participate in prayer. Lord, who is that one man? Who is that one woman strategically connected? And you learn how to discern them and receive them when they come because if you pray like i have taught you and you do not know how your answer looks like your answer will pass you 
and God will say, I answered you since January. And you kept driving away your answer. Your answer came as a destiny helper, but because you do not know what to do with destiny helpers, you push them away. Can I show you one more thing before we pray? Is someone learning? Who is ready to receive? Hmm. Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am I've taught you in this place that relationships are advantageous connections. I've taught you that relationships must be mutually beneficial, not equally beneficial, but mutually beneficial to the parties that are involved. Listen carefully now. I've taught you in this place that relationships are bridges, if you recall, to an exceptional life. The bridge between your yesterday and tomorrow, the quality of your yesterday and tomorrow is a relationship. The same way you can stand because a bridge is broken. You are seen where you need to go to, but you are not able to get there because the bridge is broken that is what happens to a man when the strategic relationships that are meant to birth prophecy in your life when those relationships are not there you can even see not by vision you can see the kind of future you should step in but never get into that future i've taught you that relationships are currencies please hear me prophetic people relationships are currencies that they can buy Anything money can buy. Anything money can buy. Relationships can buy it. Let me say it again. Anything mo you think about anything money can buy. Relationships can buy it. If money can buy you a house, relationships can buy that house. If money can buy you any means of mobility, relationships can do that. If money can fund a crusade, relationships can fund a crusade. Anything at all. Relationships are currencies. In my teaching here, teaching you on true riches, and you may want to make reference to that, one of the currencies that we use to buy money is relationships. Now listen carefully. I taught you here that the easiest way to succeed in life is through strategic relationships and destiny connections. The easiest way to succeed, even financially. But... Among the many things I've taught you about relationships, I want to recall one that is important to connect with this prophetic word. Recall that I taught you the tripartite nature of relationships. Remember that? I taught you that you have your relationship with God, your relationship with men, and your relationship with things. Let me take that again. Your relationship with God, your relationship with men, and your relationship with things. You must have a healthy relationship with God. You must have a healthy relationship with men. And you must have a healthy relationship with things. If you default in any one of these levels of relationship, you will pay for it. There is a way you are supposed to have a relationship with God to succeed. There is a way you are supposed to have a relationship with men to succeed. And there is a way you are supposed to have a relationship with things to succeed. For instance, allowing things control you, allowing things possess you is a bad way of relating with things. That includes money. It is often said that money is a bad, ma a, a, a bad master but a good slave. You see that now? There is a healthy way to relate with things such that you profit from their presence but you are not corrupted by their presence there is a way to handle money there is a way to handle increase there is a way to handle influence there is a way to handle opportunities in a way that becomes profiting unto you but does not corrupt nor destroy you there is a way to work with men such that you can derive maximum utility from their presence without being corrupted by their presence. Are we together now? If you recall, I taught you that there are two ways you step into the world of greatness, the world of men. One is the world 
through the door of need and the door of value. That if you step into the presence of greatness through the door of need, you will be in the presence of greatness, but you will remain a slave there forever. But when you step in through the door of value, even the great will acknowledge you as great. Is someone learning tonight? You see the implication of receiving prophetic words. You don't just jump and celebrate. You understand the implication and then you will see the results because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he has spoken on his own path, he's ready to do it. But it is your receiving, aligning with prophecy and engaging it by faith. That's what delivers to your table. Hallelujah. I taught you that your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Your relationship with God, please write it down. This is how wealth manifests. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Please write that down. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor now gives you access to men and systems your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor when you have wisdom and favor it will now give you access to men and it will give you access to systems men will now give you access to resources and influence you see how it works Men will now give you access to resources and they will now give you access to influence. Then you finally use the influence and the resources for your profiting and to serve the purposes of the kingdom. This is how it happens. I will, I will read that whole equation for you again. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. You have that down? Wisdom and favor gives you access to men and gives you access to systems. Men now give you access to resources and give you access to influence. And then you now use your resources and the influence that you now have to serve God, to be a blessing to men and to live a successful life. This is how it happens. Compromise on this equation and you will not make it in life, even financially. It starts with God, but it ends with a successful life. And I'm demystifying that wealth equation for you. That it is not as mysterious as people have made it. Your relationship with God, grant among the many things that relationship affords you, is wisdom and favor. Please look up. When you have wisdom and favor, genuine wisdom and favor, you will never be alone. Men will come because men were not designed to just come on their own. They come in response to wisdom. They come in response to favor. The men carrying the money you need, the men who will give the influence you need to reign in life, they will only answer to wisdom and favor. Say wisdom. Say favor. One more time, say wisdom and favor. So it stands with God, your loyalty to God, your covenant with God, your loving Jesus, your worshiping Him, your studying scripture, your praying, your accessing resources. What it does to you is that it imparts wisdom. When wisdom arrives and favor arrives, get ready, men are on their way coming. When the men come, they will come like the Magi, bringing you gifts of gold, of frankincense, and myrrh. Whether they are coming in exchange to your value or coming to reward your wisdom, it doesn't matter. One thing you will never lack when men are with you is resources. Listen, you are as wealthy as the men whose hands are open towards you. You are as wealthy as the men whose hands are open towards you. Let me say that again. You are as wealthy as the men whose hands are open towards you. 
Imagine that the men who opened their hands towards you are called Pharaoh, Solomon, and Abimelech. Will you be poor? No. Your relationship with God, purified motif, loving Jesus, understanding the purpose of abundance, the purpose of kingdom wealth, understanding the purpose of the blessing of the Lord, all together imparts upon your life, among other things, wisdom and favor. When you carry wisdom and favor, you become a living magnet. You will attract men. I tell you, get wisdom and get favor and remain inside a hole. Men will come and meet you there. The moment you see men coming to you, listen please. Once you see men coming, know that with men are resources. Please look up. There was the wisdom of God that was in the prophet Elisha. Am I right on that? When Naaman had who looked for who? Naaman was a captain of the Syrian army. But he wanted to go and meet Elisha at the recommendation of the slave girl. Question, when Naaman became healed, did he carry gifts to go back? That is always what happens in the presence of wisdom. The greatest corporations in the world, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, is a business of numbers. The reason why they are wealthy to the capacity that they are today is because the little bit you are bringing is multiplied across the billions of the people on earth. Numbers. You are as wealthy, I will tell you again, as the men whose hands are open towards you. It is an irrefutable strategy. Look up please. This is my phone. I'm holding a mobile device on my hand. What made the company that produced this mobile device billionaires in dollars? Is it that they were the most creative in the world? No. But they spread their products to men, many enough. Many people wanted their products enough. Why do you produce something very exceptional and then spend money advertising? Who are you advertising to? The men who will buy the products. Your relationship with God brings you wisdom, brings you favor. When wisdom and favor rests upon your life, watch this koinonia, listen to me. It brings you resources and also brings you influence. Are we together? When you have resources and influence, then you can now use it to serve the purposes of the kingdom, to become a blessing to many like you covenanted with God and to live a successful life. Show me anybody who has prospered in the kingdom, prospering with the dignity of kingdom integrity. You will see this formula. It started with God. God imparted wisdom upon Solomon and with that wisdom came favor and Solomon's wisdom and favor attracted people and attracted the kings of the earth. Now he had enough resources and one day he built God a house. You always see the pattern. That means you can reverse engineer this thing I just said to explain why your hands are empty. That means if your hands are empty, it is because enough men have not opened their hands. And if enough men have not opened their hands, it is because wisdom and favor has not drawn them. And if wisdom and favor is lacking, you go to God. Does any man lack wisdom? He says, let him go to God that give it. You want to prosper? I have shown you a key that converts this prophecy. Father, I thank you because you are the giver of wisdom. Are you saying that it's unwise to ask God directly for money? He can be faithful, but this is the equation. This is how it comes. You don't just say, oh God, please give me money now. Is it that you are not? That's not how it works. Now, a miracle can happen to solve an immediate problem. But let me tell you classically, God answers people's wealth problem by giving them wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor attracts men. Men come with resources and influence. Once you have that, it is called financial dominion because you can repeat the circle again. For as long as your relationship with God. Now, if you are Satan and you want to make someone poor, what will be the greatest point of your target? It's not men. It's the person's relationship with God. 
Whatever I can do to cut you from receiving wisdom and favor, I've done you a disservice as far as becoming prosperous is concerned. Now, are you seeing that true prosperity should not make you leave God? Does this make sense to you now? True prosperity does not make believers leave God. It's a lie. It's a system of the world that tries to bypass this formula. You should be more spiritual the wealthier you are becoming because God should be the source of that wisdom. That means your fellowship with God becomes a continuity for more wisdom, greater wisdom. So in what way does somebody become prosperous and then now forgets God? That means that person is going to go down soon. All wealth starts from the realm of the spirit. If you don't receive it from God Almighty, you will receive it from a familiar spirit. Both of them have covenants you must answer to. Are we together? If you go to Satan and say, make me wealthy, you say, that is fine. But here are my terms. You will serve me. You will worship me. You will draw people to me. You will destroy lives. You will destroy homes. You will live a foolish life. You will not be able to spend your money. You will die miserably. Is this a covenant? You say, fine. Once you sign it, what Satan will give you is also wisdom and favor. He won't give you money. It's still the same formula. He will place something on your life that makes you unusually wise to your detriment. With that wisdom, you will come up with services and products that will still attract the same men. When those men come, they will still bring the resources. But the only thing is that when you have the resources and the influence, Satan will remind you, remember what we agreed on. And if you say, don't disturb me, you'll you be surprised. All he needs to do is withdraw what brought them. And what you have, no matter how much, will deplete mysteriously. True prosperity is not money. True prosperity is your relationship with God. And the wisdom that is endlessly flowing from him to you and the favor that endlessly comes that capacity to gravitate strategic relationships to your life and with the coming of those relationships will be resources and influence and with the resources and influence you are now mandated to remember the reason why he blessed you to be a blessing to the world live a responsible life with dignity advance the program of god so when god says it's a season of abundance what in your understanding do you think he's saying he's saying it's a season to get closer to me like never before did you get that now because wisdom truly comes from god it can be imparted through careers but ultimately wisdom comes from god hmm. wealth is relational all way relationship with God then relationship with men then relationship with things and that includes resources apostle so what becomes the answer for my empty-handedness now the absence of men enough men to bless you or a certain kind of men who don't have the means to bless you and I've taught you here, and I will still pray that prayer for you tonight, that when God wants to help you, he relocates your audience. Did I teach you that? He brings to you strategic men. Find a way of believing this. Strategic people. Strategic people. For the lack of this simple understanding, there are believers praying foolishly. There are believers going around in circles and wondering why they are not prosperous, regardless what happens. They respect things more than men. For most believers, all that is in their mind is the arrival of Naira and Kobo and pounds and dollars. It doesn't work that way. How do you know you need wisdom? Because nobody is around your life to drink of that wisdom that means you don't have it i tell you the truth wisdom and favor is so scarce when you carry that grace you will never be alone men will look for you you don't have to be a preacher you can be a banker you can be a graduate the moment you carry genuine wisdom wisdom that can solve problems 
wisdom. Oh, that there is oil and treasure to be desired in the dwelling of the wise. There is treasure to be desired in the dwelling of the wise. When I learned this as a principle, the greatest secret of the help of God upon my life is my relationship with Him. Now, I don't seek Him just because I want wisdom. I love Him for who He is. But you see, it's impossible to strengthen your intimacy with God and not have among the many things that pour into you ever increasing wisdom. And as that wisdom keeps coming, His favor keeps resting upon you. You know what happens? Men will keep coming. And those men will not come empty. Even if you are a baby, they will not ask you how old you are. They will not ask you whether you are male or female. They will not ask you whether you are Igbo, you are Yoruba, you are Hausa, you are American, you are... They will not ask you that. No. Genuine wisdom defies all those sentiments. And when it comes, with it will come resources. Limitless resources. Resources as many as the men that come. Please hear me. The multitude of men is also the multitude of wealth. Do you believe what you just heard tonight? When God tells us that we're stepping into a season of abundance, let me help you make sense of what this prophecy is and then we'll pray. Number one, it means like never before you should get closer to God because He is the fountain of wisdom. He is the only one who can give men wisdom and he is the only one who is the true source of favor. When wisdom and favor rests upon you, men will come. They will come in their numbers. They will come from different nations. You don't need to travel around the world to meet the men who are holding the resources that are yours. You just need to be valuable. I wish I had the time I would have shown you what happened between the widow in Zarephath and Elijah. When every, the brook chariot had dried, God told him to go to Zarephath. He says, I have commanded a widow to feed you. I have commanded a widow to feed you. I have commanded a widow to feed you. When he got there, the woman did not sound like she was commanded. And the man said, you know what? Since I am here now, I have come with value. Your relationship with me is why I will not die. But my relationship with you is why you will live too. Your oil will not be spent. Your flour will not be spent all through the period of famine. And in return, she kept cooking the oil, the, the food that will not be spent. And both of them benefited. Wisdom, wisdom brings men. Wisdom brings men. Favor brings men. With the coming of men, you will always find resources. Therefore, if your hands are empty, what you should pray for is not money. What you should pray for is the wisdom and the favor to the degree that can draw strategic men. The Bible puts it this way. Gentiles shall come to your light. Koinonia, hear me. It says kings. These are the people you are looking for. Kings. Kings don't come to your light. Kings come to the brightness of your rising. The brightness, the excellency of that wisdom. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. That the same way a man receives wisdom, a business can also receive wisdom. A ministry can also receive wisdom. Receive favor. And the same thing that happens to individuals will happen to the business, 
will happen to the ministry the same way a man can receive wisdom receive favor men will come to that man as a single entity bringing gold frankincense and myrrh a ministry can receive wisdom by the same principle of intimacy by the same principle access favor and the same way men come to the person is the same way men will come to the vision and bring to that vision resources so you don't just pray and say Lord bring money to run this church that's not how it works it starts with intimacy intimacy brings wisdom and favor favor attracts men then graduates the men to quality men then graduates them to kings nobles gatekeepers captains of industry and when they come they give to match their level of growth they give to match their level of growth a billionaire will never give to somebody he loves and honors as a pauper no he will not do that are we together if a billionaire considers you valuable enough to him not that he's just doing charity he considers you an asset he will give to match his mindset this is what brings acceleration so in one day you can have an allowance of decades because somebody with such mindset and such resources granted access to you now you may say some of the people who give sometimes they are not believers some of the people who come they are not believers god allows that because the earth is still him it still belongs to him even if they went to the devil to get that money provided you know it's evil money and you reject it god will honor you but you don't have the liberty to know how everybody made their money that is the reason why when the money comes to you you purify it with thanksgiving this is what the bible says Which is the reason why it is dangerous to steal money in church. Hey, it's dangerous to do what? Because you don't know what you are stealing. Someone may pray all the courses in his life and say, Lord, on this seed, let this thing rest. And that's the one you carried. Oh, rest on me oh rest on me I want to ask you a question are there men in Abuja are there men in Lagos are there men in Nigeria are there men in UK in America everywhere including your village are there strategic men in Abuja are there strategic men in Nigeria if God is the God of portions your portion has been distributed listen listen to me I want you to believe this God is a God of portions he said the increase of the field is for all and that even the king is fed you can explain your wealth even if the world's economy they may not understand it wealth is not a is not magic it comes from men If I become a billion naira richer, a billion dollars richer, it came from men. The question is, if you get it by pointing a gun, you are a thief. It is still men you got it from. Every Ambroba got his money from men. The only thing is that he did, that relationship was not profitable because he pointed a gun at their head to collect it. Whether you are a thief, whether you are an entrepreneur, whether you are, God forbid, an occultist, is still men that the resources will come from. It is how it is gotten that glorifies God or otherwise. Men. In all you're getting, if you ignore men, don't pursue contracts and ignore men. You are making a mistake. Because the person approving the contract is a man. 
what you need to pray for is say Lord give me wisdom give me favor favor enough to make anyone including Cyrus to want me how many of you know that wealthy people also have a need and everybody's need is his point of contact the rate at which we chase people for money God never have told you wealth is not something you pursue you attract it by who you are becoming the excellency of the wisdom of God at work in your life if I prosper today it's not because I'm a preacher no if I prosper today is because I have received by mercy wisdom and favor that is applicable to enough men and those men can gravitate towards me and in honor to that wisdom whether sold or dispensed freely they will honor it and and if those men are sufficient enough I will not beg for bread are we together listen to what I'm telling you God and men are the two secrets I've given you today God and men not just products and services respect whoever taught you what they taught you but ask the person whether he's rich first god and men are the greatest secrets i know to wealth god and men give value to products and services give value to businesses and estates whatever it is god and men are the secrets if I was solving all my discussion as a mathematical problem, at the end of all of that, I will remove all the variables. And the only two that will be left is God and man. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Every other variable is almost inconsequential. If God says no and men say no, carry your products places, you will still be poor. But if God says yes, he will put something in you that will force men to say yes. The greatest secret I know, the greatest secret to wealth are strategic relationships. But it does not come by chasing people. We used to call it those days friend for food. People who just look for a rich person and inconvenience them. It doesn't work that way. You attract strategic people by displaying the excellency of the wisdom of God. Are we together? And that includes those, you know, we, we say it a lot in church that the wealth of the wicked is laid for the righteous. It will not happen just by you folding your arms. God will give you wisdom. Wisdom that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Wisdom that is needed even in the Babylonian camp. They will search for men with that kind of wisdom and not find it. And they will come to you to entreat your favor. And when they come to you, like Naaman, they will not come empty. If Elisha was hungry, he would have collected the gift from Naaman. Elisha said, no, 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 you go. Look at what Elisha told the woman in Shunem. He said, what should I do? Should I talk to the king for you? I can talk to the king. King, attend to a woman here. And if you say, prophet, I ignore you, you will see what the wisdom of God can do. She will also hear by this time tomorrow. And that king will leave that place quietly. Are we together? This explains the wealth of many in the kingdom. I'm saying it again. If your wealth is by crook, by bribery and corruption, it will not fit this equation. But if it is with the dignity of kingdom integrity, don't tell me it did not start with God. Wealth does not start with ideas. Kingdom wealth does not start with ideas. Business people, I respect all that you have learned, but I submit to you with your, by the authority of scripture. Wealth does not even start with business. It does not start with investments. Wealth starts with your relationship with God. From that relationship comes the wisdom and the favor. It can translate to quality investments. The investment will come as an advice from a man. The investment, whatever you are doing, it is still men. You just carry this equation and go and work wonders with it. God and men. 
God and men, they will give value to ideas. God and men will give value to estates. God and men. Someone God can give you a wisdom now to build an estate. And before you finish, a strategic man will come and say, my company wants to put in 50 people and you just build the estates, you already have occupants. That one is not an idea. It's favor that has come from men. 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 Let me remind you again before we begin to pray. You are as wealthy as the men who open their hands towards you. Either they open their hands to transact with you. When you call someone a contractor, who is a contractor? A contractor is not just one who builds roads or supplies. A contractor is one who needs favor with men first. Your tractor will remain there until men give you access. Am I right on that? So Satan has suggested various ways of attracting men bribery, corruption, going to the harbor list, all of these are unnecessary. God's superior ways to stay with him and he will grant you wisdom. The wisdom will direct you on what to do. The wisdom will direct you on how to relate with those men well. I've taught you relationships. You can be in the place of prayer with God and God can tell you, buy a pack of wine, go and greet this man. That is the wisdom for your next level. It may not be applicable to everybody, but it came in the place of prayer. Just when you are going to greet the man, that's when your destiny helper just came to see the man too. And they'll say, aha, this is the man that I told you. This man can build. And the man will look at you and say, I don't know what is, can you take a contract of 10 billion? Will you be able to do it? Take 5 billion to mobilize you first. And someone will see you and say, no, this guy must have gone somewhere. The person is right. You went somewhere, truly. Listen, let me challenge all business people and contractors here. Trust me, if you are part of this vision, I'm showing you how to be wealthy. Leave all those contract papers in one minute and take a day or two. Stop chasing around people. People insult you, you still say yes, sir. No, go with God. Place something upon my head, oh God. Place something upon my business. Place something upon my construction company. Bring honor to my becoming. Let me not become as a slave and owe everybody thank you. Someone sees you tomorrow, even in your height, he still wants to kick you like a football and says, I made you, oh. Uh -uh. Abraham said, let it not be that anyone will say, I made Abraham rich. All blessings come from God but through men. Don't allow any man to tell you he's the one who made you. That's absolute nonsense. But that is the consequence of making men become God. Men are in the success equation. But it starts with God. The formula is in the beginning. God. Is someone ready to pray in the spirit? Go ahead and pray in the spirit for one minute. Before I speak, I release these prophetic words over your head. Ah, don't waste this dream. Don't waste this dream. It has come as a prophetic guide for us. Seasons of abundance. A season of abundance by the power of the Holy Spirit. Abundance of grace. Abundance of resources. Riches and wealth. Empowerment and supplies. For the sake of the kingdom. For the sake of God's program. For the sake of your dignity. Someone pray. Take a minute to pray. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. Had he said it, shall he not make it good? Go ahead and pray. Yeah. 
of Jesus in the name of Jesus I made a covenant with my destiny that I will never be poor that I will not serve God in poverty not when I found this it is God and men and they are all in abundance God is nigh them that call upon him there are 8 billion people on earth. I told you everybody cannot hate you. The formula for your wealth is already there. So the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all. And that even the king works by the same formula. If the king wants to prosper, it is still wisdom, favor, man, resources. If you go to serve Satan, it is still the same thing your covenant alignment and your loyalty revealing the purpose for that wealth then you will have a negative expression of wisdom and favor bringing men no matter how you route it it is the same formula so you now understand what Men like God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, will say that God said, get down and make my people rich. Now, many people have misunderstood it, but I understand it to mean get down and become an agent of imparting wisdom and favor upon my people. Because when they have access to my wisdom, God makes you an agent of blessing men, not just by making you a businessman. He makes you a custodian of the wisdom of heaven. A custodian of the favor of God you should never be under this grace and struggle financially because these virtues by the Spirit this wisdom and favor are in abundance try to believe what I'm saying believe that I love you enough to not deceive you so as I pray now know that God took you from home and brought you here to receive a higher dimension of wisdom to receive a higher dimension of favor and you now know what to watch out for from a financial standpoint that when wisdom comes upon you when favor comes upon you what becomes your next prayer point Lord give me discernment because I know men are coming let me not abort prophetic seasons and you now begin to rehearse all that I've taught you about relationships to practice the law of honor, to be friendly, to be courteous. Are we together? So that when the men come, they will stay. And when they stay, they will bring to you gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when they bring to you gold and frankincense and myrrh, listen carefully, as they bring that to you, then you remember the Lord thy God for it is he who has given you the power to prosper you will not brag around and make a lot of noise because before you started the journey your agreement with God is that his blessing upon you will not distract you you will still be on your knees as a billionaire you will still be on your knees as a giver to the work of God only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end look at me now you know how Solomon prospered God did not give him gold he loved the Lord enough and offered a thousand bond offerings God came to him in the night and said Solomon what should I give you 
And Solomon said, I'm a young man. Grant unto me an understanding heart to know judgment. And God said, you are wise. Who taught you this? You did not ask for the life of your enemies. Because your enemies are not the only hindrance to your, your going forward. It is principally wisdom. And he said, because you have asked this, and not the life of your enemies, I have given you this. As soon as Solomon got up, the first manifestation of wisdom was judging the case of two harlots. The story spread round. Kings started coming. The Bible says they came to learn the wisdom of Solomon. Who is this man? And they came with treasures. If you knew Solomon in January 2024, by May 2024, with the spirit of wisdom, you may look at him and say, what get rich quick did you get into like this? I told you, I don't believe in get rich quick as a scam, but my God, God can give you acceleration by wisdom. How about favor? Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And he carried Mephibosheth and said, from today you will dine with me here all the days of your life. Who likes you matters. Who likes you matters. When God wants to help you, he will make Pharaoh like you. He will make Abimelech like you. He will make Boaz like you. He will make Ahasuerus like you. Don't you see it all through scripture? There is no magic to this thing. When God wants to help you, my God, he will amplify your little efforts so that other men who already have what is yours will leave it there and run away. And you will come and find abundance even when he says by this time tomorrow it happens through men even when he gets to Jehoshaphat how do people go for war carrying gold they all fell as dead men they were dead but they were still men and the gold was still on them even though they were dead men what gives value to everything that drives us today oil and gas real estate investments whatever you call it is men and if those men hate you and stand as a blockade you will be surprised how gifted you can be and yet you will remain limited so to someone here who has been unemployed to someone here who has been fighting to make ends meet god has announced to you i want to pray now these two graces on your life wisdom and favor and I want you to receive it and I'm praying this over our global family and as many people who believe in this mystery you will marvel and wonder I know what the wisdom of God can do I know what his favor can do to an individual to a ministry to a people can I pray for you now oh rest on send a word to Jacob it is so that it be lightened upon Israel you showed me this dream a shoot growing in a moment of time to become a giant tree and I saw season of abundance Lord we receive as a ministry your prophetic word as individuals as a ministry as all the businesses and all the value adding services connected to this vision and now oh god i have taught your people as you've placed in my heart i pray that you will honor these prophetic declarations that this grace truly will come on them i decree and declare over everyone under the sound of my voice in this place across the overflows online in the name of jesus tonight by reason of this prophetic word receive right now the spirit of wisdom receive right now the spirit of wisdom 
extraordinary wisdom wisdom as strange solutions wisdom as divine direction wisdom as the capacity to speak right to say what needs to be said in the presence of your helpers wisdom as capacity upon your mind to think productively receive it in the name of Jesus for everyone who has struggled financially as an individual as a ministry as a business as a believer as a family person I decree and declare wisdom bails you out of pain and shame wisdom bails you out of pain and shame wisdom bails you out of pain and shame are you ready to receive favor father this grace that you have placed upon men called favor that can draw kings that can draw nobles that can rearrange a platform to honor a man upon everyone who is here let that grace rest upon you now let favor 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 rest upon you now in the name of Jesus and by this impartation all the men whether you call them business partners or destiny helpers or announcers or whatever it is in whatever capacity I gravitate them towards your life I gravitate helpers towards your life I gravitate the wealthy towards your life help us of the war may they find you may they bless you may they find you may they bless you may they find you may they bless you may God use them to lift you may God use them to announce you I say it again may God use them to bless you may God use them to announce you in the name of Jesus When the prophet told the woman who was in debt, he said, go and borrow vessels. You thought it would be about oil. No, it was not about oil. It was not the oil that gave her money. Her money came from men. He said, now that you have the oil, I have prophesied some men that will be waiting for you. Go and sell it to them. They will be willing to buy it. Let me pray for someone. Your wisdom will not be a waste. The favor on you will not be a waste. I say it again, the men that must show up to honor the presence of wisdom, to honor the presence of favor, may God send them to you. May God bring them to you. Send them to you. Bring them to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And when those men come, may God walk upon their heart to open their hands financially towards you. May God walk upon their heart to open their hands financially towards you. Hear me again. May God walk upon their hearts to open their hands financially towards you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here who is in debt, you are in financial problems in the name that is above all names by this same mystery of wisdom bringing men bringing resources come out of that financial situation come out of borrowing and begging and owing i say it again come out of begging and borrowing and owing you will owe no man nothing but love in the name of jesus final prayer for you listen to me 
covenant wealth kingdom wealth like I've taught you is hinged on your vowing before God that everything he brings to your life will be for your comfort his kingdom and the world around you your comfort his kingdom and the world around you your comfort his kingdom and the world around you by this agreement when you step into it God can be free to release to you now whatever comes because he knows it will not destroy you I'm praying for you grace to not be distracted by every blessing God gives receive it grace to take care of yourself your children your family when he blesses you receive that grace grace to support the work of the kingdom without coercion and manipulation receive it grace to be a blessing to everyone around you receive it in the name of Jesus God will give you wealth that will last you will not go up today and down tomorrow you will not be wealthy today and be a beggar tomorrow in the name of Jesus now I pray for you any one of you who has been involved in any practice financially speaking that has drawn a cost to your life or to those around you you see that now the integrity of heart and loving Jesus serving him and living for him even with your finance your finance is also an act of worship I pray for you if there is any embargo that authorizes hell to keep recycling poverty and pain and want and lack around your life in the name of Jesus let the blood speak let mercy speak let the blood speak let mercy speak therefore by this impartation go and prosper prosper mysteriously prosper miraculously prosper consistently 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 in ever increasing dimensions in Jesus mighty name we pray give Jesus a big hand clap give Jesus a big big hand clap it's a new season for you it's a new season for you in the name of Jesus hallelujah please when you go back home listen to this message again discipline yourself get it again put on your earphones listen perhaps you may want to take a day to fast listen to it again open up your heart and walk yourself glide miraculously mysteriously into the wealthy place thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads we walk through fire and through water but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place can i do the altar call down very quickly we spoke about finances but it all ends with jesus because it's all about him and his kingdom let me your attention for one minute you are in this place and you heard this word and for you while I was speaking about abundance and God's prophetic word what you were hearing is a cry for a deeper greater richer more rewarding and more satisfying relationship it is never too late to make it right with Jesus I want to give someone who came to church tonight an opportunity to make it right with Jesus perhaps it's the first time you may be making that decision or you want to rededicate your life you're saying apostle I don't want this meeting to end today without an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Wherever you are, I'm going to request that you pick your bags, your Bibles, whatever you came to church with, very boldly. Be the first to come. Leave your seat and come and stand right in front of me. And please clear the way for those who are coming. Let's encourage them as they come. Come. It all starts with Jesus. Starts with your relationship with him. Come. Keep clapping, Koinonia. God bless you. God bless a brother coming. God bless a sister coming. God bless a potential kingdom giant coming. Keep clapping until they come. Please, if you are coming, make haste. Make haste and come. Very quickly. God bless you. 
It's a new season for you. For you, it's not only a season of abundance. It's a season of light. It's a season of deliverance. It's a season of restoration. Jesus is calling someone. Let's appreciate them as they come. God bless you. Thank you for the courage to have come to Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to say a very big thank you to every one of you. Listen to me. It pays to love Jesus. The songwriter says, From beginning to the end, It will always be, It's always been you, Jesus. Not money, Not fame, Not prosperity. It's Jesus. All the way. The reason for the blessing is Him. The reason to use it is in Him. Thank you for coming. Lift your right hand, if you can, and say this after me, as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe, say it, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. Right now, I receive your life into my heart and I pray that you are my Lord my Savior and my King the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name amen God bless you now here's what I want you to do for me there are counselors waving the placard. Please may I request that... Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.